Hi, everybody. I'm Michelle Morris from Consolidated Planning Group. It is so good to have you all here with me, especially you, Dwayne. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we pleasure. are going to be talking about the family opportunity mortgage. And this is something that might be helpful for your families. I'm so glad you're here to listen to us speak about this today. Um, as you might have just heard, we are recording this webinar. And after we're finished today, everybody should receive a copy of this uh, well, a link to the webinar. We will send that straight to your email. You'll be able to check this webinar out later. And you should also be receiving a copy of the slides. So if you have questions, you'll be able to review the information. Also, if you have questions while we're going through this presentation today, please put them in the chat box. Since we're in webinar mode, we cannot see you or hear you. Uh, so feel free to enjoy your lunch or a snack or whatever you're doing over there. Um, but any questions or comments, we would love to have those. We want this to be interactive. So please do put those in the chat box for us. Um, the last thing I wanted to say is that um, we really appreciate you being here. We work all across the United States. And Dwayne, is this a program that's available all across the United States? Yes, yes, it is. Okay, perfect. So it doesn't matter if you're from Texas, where we are located, or if you're in any state across the country. This is great information for you. So first of all, let's talk a little bit about Consolidated Planning Group. We host these webinars uh, two, three, sometimes even more than that, times a week. <clears throat> and our goal is really to help shine a spotlight on important information for families who have a loved one with any kind of intellectual or developmental disability. We are a financial planning firm, uh, but we do focus on serving families like yours. About 95, 97% of the families that we work with do have an individual with a special need in their family that they're taking care of. And that's not just something we do once in a while. It's not just one of the many services that we offer. It is the main thing that we do. We help families who have loved ones who have special needs and we help them plan and prepare for the future. We've been in business for over 30 years doing um, insurance and securities and financial services. Uh, we are members of the Special Needs Planning Academy. And we are National Social Security Advisors. And I am a chartered special needs consultant through the American College of Financial Services. So we truly live this and breathe this and we seek out ways to be able to better serve you, our clients. Um, so that's why we present all of this free information is because we know there's so much out there and there's a lot of noise. There's some misinformation. There are well-meaning family members and friends who try to tell you things that may or may not be correct. So we're out here to set the record straight. Uh, we help families with everything financial related through the lens of understanding that your loved one might need help for the rest of their lives. They might not be able to hold a full-time job where they're going to earn enough to be completely independent. They might have care needs um, where they might, might not be able to be completely independent. So we can help you think about things like protection plans for your family, lifetime care costs and, and planning for that care for your loved one, uh, transition planning through the big three transitions in their lives. That is transitioning from high school to the real world, so-called real world, where they're not in school all day, every day. You don't want them to just graduate to the couch. So what comes after high school? We help with that transition. We help you with the transition when your child turns 18 and they are no longer a child in the eyes of the law. Now they are a legal adult. What happens then? And then the transition from being in mom and dad's house to being in whatever situation comes next. 
We help with all of those areas. Of course, we help you understand your ABLE accounts, your special needs trust, where your money needs to be in the right bucket so that it does not jeopardize any of their benefits through the state or federal government like SSI, SSDI, Medicaid, Medicare, state waiver programs. And of course, we are here to advocate and to ed educate families, um, educate you and advocate for you. You know, there are fewer than a tenth of a percent of the financial planning firms across the United States that focus on special needs planning like we do. Um, 263,000 financial advisors in the U.S. and fewer than 200 of them focus on this topic. So you are definitely in the right place when you're working with Consolidated Planning Group. And like I said, we are the financial side of things. We'll help you with transition planning, making sure your money is in the right places and that you have enough for a happy retirement for you and future care needs for your loved one. So planning early and getting these questions answered and thinking about things in advance is definitely going to be a huge help to you and your family. So it's never too early to start planning. We would prefer that our clients plan for the long term. And in that way, the changes that you might need to make or things that you might need to add to your financial life are small and manageable and have a long time to change and grow. Whereas if you wait to plan until you're in your 60s or beyond, um, it's a lot harder to make meaningful impact in a shorter period of time. So do think about what's going to happen after high school, where your loved one might live or work, what programs are available to them, and think about what waiting lists might be out there. And the last bit of advice we always like to give before I turn everything over to Dwayne is to make careful considerations before you just assume that a loved one is going to be, um, a sibling is going to be taking care of your child in the future. Um, many parents, and in an ideal world, this would be great. Many parents just think, oh, older sister Sarah will take care of her younger brother, Jacob, who has autism when, when they grow up. Well, at that point, you know, Sarah is going to have her own life and her own family and career and needs and children. And she might see taking care of her brother as an obligation that she didn't really, um, maybe it's biting off more than she can chew. And she might feel a little bit uh, of an obligation there. And, and little Jacob, whose sister is now stepping into the role of caregiver, they've had all of this lifetime of friends as friends and living as loving siblings and now she's going to try to be mom well you're not my mom he might have a a resentment there too so it can go both ways uh in that relationship and you just want to be really careful about that we want them to have a loving relationship not an obligatory or resentful relationship so that's all the advice I have to give to you right now. I will come back later and share with you um, more things that you should be keeping on your radar as it relates to special needs planning, topics that we cover, and how to sign up for your free consultation with us to talk about finances. But I want to turn everything over right now to Dwayne. Mr. Graham is a branch manager and he is going to talk to us about this fantastic mortgage um, product that is available. It's not necessarily a new product, it's just not well advertised. And I am particularly interested because before my career in um, financial services, I was a realtor for uh, 16 years. So I'm excited really to hear what you have to say about this, uh, Dwayne. So Without any further ado, please copy down Dwayne's email address, and um, I will turn it over to you. Hey, I appreciate that, Michelle. So my name is Dwayne Graham. I'm a branch manager for New American Funding here in Sugarland, Texas. We do loans over the entire country. So this program doesn't particularly apply to Texas. It's, it's in any state. And Michelle hit the nail on the head. So this is a program that it's actually been around for a while, but it's not a very well-known program. So part of what we want to do is 
dispel some of the myths that might come with it and just explain opportunities that are available for for uh parents or or uh kids with with special needs so this is a fanny made product what this does is it allows the parents to purchase the home for the special needs child and the same requirements the same benefits the same uh everything that goes with purchasing a primary residence applies in this situation now typically whenever someone is purchasing a home that they're not living at then that would either be considered a second home or it be considered an investment property the interest rate for those are higher the down payment requirement is higher and it's just it's a it's a uh i wouldn't say more challenging but it's a it's looked at a little bit differently versus when it's your primary residence so this is an 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 option for families who are trying to purchase a home for their special needs child where they want them to have their own independence but at the same time give them a space where it's considered their primary residence so it just allows the the parent to purchase a home for their disabled child with with the same benefits that that they get when they're purchasing their primary residence so it offers flexibility and in down payments so with this particular program you can do as little as 3% down i shared with you guys earlier that with a second home and with the investment property the down payment requirement is higher so for a second home it would be 10% minimum 10% for the down payment with an investment property it's minimum 15% so in that one small example you'll see that there's a huge difference in the amount for down payment so it's definitely a benefit when purchasing this for your 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 special needs so so that's more like an fha loan those used to be three and a half percent um so this is three percent down that's fantastic yes that's the minimum so minimum down payment for this one is is three percent which in in this example is actually better than an fha product because fha is three and a half percent yes yes so it allows for more attainable home ownership for the special needs child because again it's 3% down versus some of the other programs now the interest rate again we talked a little bit before about the interest well the requirements for second home and the requirement for investment property the interest rate for this program is lower than those two because again with this product it's considered a primary residence so the same benefits that that mom and dad get whenever they purchase their primary home it's the same benefits that they get for their their child when purchasing the home so including interest rates are better home, including the homestead exemption well with the homestead exemption i'm glad you brought it up michelle you picked up on where i was going you read my mind <laughs> so with the homestead exemption only 50% of the homestead benefit would apply in this situation because it's not considered mom and dad's homestead it's considered the child's homestead so it would be mom and dad who are on the the loan they can add child if they wanted to with adding the child the child can get their part of the ownership of the property homestead it so okay. technically 50% homestead would apply yes yes and next slide please yeah now with this one it allows for down to a 620 credit score so in most situations when you're purchasing an investment property the the credit score requirement is a little bit higher depending on the particular program that you're trying to get approved for but with this one you can go down to a 620 credit score and as long as you run it through our automated underwriting system and the system approves the parents for the program that's basically it so it offers more flexible credit score requirements versus some of the other programs it's fantastic yeah yeah, it's pretty cool. Now, with it, you can go up pretty high on the purchase price. This is actually going to be updated soon. So, as of right now, it's at about 802 for the purchase price, and that's going to actually go up a little bit more at the end of this year. So, 760 7 766,550 was the limit as of right now. This is a recent change within the last few weeks. as of right now it's at 802 and we actually think it's going to be higher so you can potentially purchase a home and have a loan amount of 802 and still do 3% down 
as a primary residence for your disabled child. Yeah, yeah. It offers both fixed and adjustable rate mortgages. So it's it's whatever whatever you the 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 parents feel is a better option for you. So we can take a look at uh, fixed rate options. We can take a look at adjustable rate options. With the adjustable rate options, uh, we can take a look at anywhere from three to 10 years as far as the adjustment period. And again, it's whatever works best for you. So whenever we take a look at the scenario, we present you with options and we say, Here are the, here's the scenario with the 30-year fix. Here's the scenario if you wanted to look at an adjustable rate option with a three-year adjustable rate, with a five, a seven, or a 10-year adjustable rate option. So we can take a look at options for you and present you with those options and you just decide, you let us know which one works best. Now, um, do you have any idea about whether or not this would count against SSI benefits if the child's name is on that property? I'm not 100% sure on that one because I never see what happens after. So I never see what happens after. Okay. I can find out. Let me do some digging. Let me do some research to see if I can if I can get that question answered for you, Michelle. Yeah, I'm not sure because with SSI benefits, they always say that your child is allowed to have $2,000 in the bank. They're allowed mm -hmm. to work a little bit up to substantial gainful amount, and they are allowed to own a car and a house. So because of that being able to own a house, I don't yes. think that it's going to affect their SSI benefits, guys. Great yeah. question. And technically, technically, they're only 50% owners. So I don't know if that plays a role as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I think, and also, you know, would you happen to know if the special needs trust can be the owner of the home? I can find out uh, the answer for that question as well. Yeah. Let yeah. me look into, let me look into those things. Those two things. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's good to know. Great and question, guys. Yeah. <laughs> and do they have any, um, recommendations or eligibility requirements around the child's abilities. Um, I, of course, the parent isn't going to thrust their child into living in their own home if they mm -hmm. are, you know, very, very in need of support if they're heavily impacted by their disability. But if it's feasible in the parent's eyes, does the mortgage company have any rules on that? No, no. So one of the slides that we're going to go over is the purpose of the program is to foster independence. So this allows them to have their own space. It allows them to have their own home while still being close to mom or dad. So with it, it's designed for, let's say uh, the child just wants, they want their own space and they still want, the mom and dad still want them to be close enough where they can still provide care. So they're buying a house on the same street. They're buying a house across the street. They're buying a house that's beside them. So it allows them to still be able to have their own independence, they have their own space while still being close enough to allow mom and dad to still be caretakers. Yes. And this one, uh, there's no geographic restrictions. So it's not based on where they are. It's not based on where they're purchasing. With some of the other programs, like say for instance, a second home. If you're purchasing a second home and it's too close to where you're where you're currently living, mm -hmm. it's, it's not considered a second home because it's too close to where you're living. So the true purpose of a second home is if you're purchasing like a getaway home. So if you live in Houston and you're purchasing a home in Austin, or if you live in Houston, you're purchasing a house in Dallas, that's considered a second home. A second home where you live on Main Street and you're purchasing a second home that's three doors down, the underwriter wouldn't consider that a second home because it's it's it doesn't fit the criteria or the geographic uh, restrictions for being a second home, it's, it's, it has to be something that makes sense. So, so that would with be this program, a, uh, an investment property if it was too close. Yes, to exactly. Yes. With this product, there is no geographic restriction. So I've had clients who they live in one house and they literally purchase their neighbor's home because they want to be within close proximity to the child. So no geographic restrictions, which is uh, a really, really good, 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 um, points with this yeah I'm, I'm getting great questions in the yeah. chat box and um yes. i love this so there's no they don't 
define the special needs or do you have to show proof like from a doctor that there's a disability or yes you do yes you do we have to get something something that that solidifies the fact that that the child is considered disabled so as long as we can we can provide that information then underwriting is going to be fine with it yes okay uh what about if the parents are no longer living the the guardians can do this then correct yes 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 so the legal there... guardian can can do it for them. Okay, perfect. Um, I'm just going to hit you with a couple questions if you don't mind. Sure, sure, okay. sure. Go ahead. Let's go. All right. What about renting a room out to somebody else? Or, you know, the question that would naturally follow would be making that a group home. The purpose of the program is to provide the space for the disabled child. Now, technically, they're not supposed to be renting any other rooms, mm -hmm. but with, with, cause this is, this is one that, that someone from the last session had asked and I, I, I looked into it. So the response that I got was this program is designed to provide the safe space for the, the disabled child. So technically they're, they're not supposed to rent a room or get, get any kind of income from it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, now, this applies to homes that are already, you know, single family, already built. Does it apply to land or new construction? No. So it's not land and not for new construction. It's 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 exactly what you just mentioned. It's homes that have already been built. Yes. Okay. And then last question I'm going to ask you, and then I'm going to let you do some more slides, and then we'll go back mm -hmm. to questions. Uh, do all of the normal banks offer this and uh, you know any typical bank local bank or is no. it you know specialized no not that many lenders offer this i don't know of, of anyone else who offers the program i'm sure that there are some other lenders who do but i can't think of any yeah yeah because okay. with this product i'm with new american funding new american yeah. funding yeah. All right. Yeah, so we're we're a direct lender. We're an independent mortgage bank, and um, just a, a a little bit about us. We've been in business since two thousand three. We do uh, we service ninety seven percent of the loans that we originate. So what that means is, whenever somebody closes on a house, ninety seven percent of the time they make their payments to us. Now the three percent that don't is we offer uh, other programs. So we offer like down payment assistance programs, and typically with most of the down payment assistance program. The entity that is giving the assistance, they're the ones who normally determine who the servicing lender is. So that's one of the reasons why we're not like 100% servicing. Yes. Right. Now, that just brought up a, a great question that I think uh, someone might ask. They might ask, are there any assistance options with this particular program? Unfortunately, no. No. So there aren't any assistance programs that can be combined with this particular program. This is just, it allows for a purchase of a primary residence, even though the parents aren't gonna be living there as their primary residence, it's still treated as a primary residence for their disabled child, yes. Okay, fantastic. Thank you so much for clearing all of that up. Yes, now uh, it offers flexibility on income. So you can be self-employed, you can be a W-2 employee, you can, as long as we can show that your income is stable, and that it's likely to continue, then the underwriter would consider it. Now, for someone who's self-employed, we have to show a history of self-employment. So we have to show a minimum of one year being self-employed, uh, in most cases, two years. But we, we do have exceptions where we can go down to one year. So it does offer some flexibility when it comes to employment. It doesn't apply only to being W-2 or only being self-employed. There's some flexibility there. Fantastic. Now, this also allows the parents who are purchasing for the disabled child to retain their primary residence. So even though they own a primary residence, it's still considered a primary residence for the child. So it's not like the parents would have to sell or move in or do anything with their primary residence. It allows the, the parents to purchase this as a primary residence for their, their, their child. And again, the purpose of it is to maintain, maintain stability within the family. It just provides an independent space for the disabled child who just wants their own space. 
Now, one of the things that you talked about is, you know, different sources of income, um, mm-hmm. self-employment, W-2s, all of that. Mm-hmm. What about if the, t- the parent is retired already? We can use retirement, yes. So as long as the, the, the debt to income ratio is within the threshold of what's allowed, then the income's fine. As long as we can show that the income is stable and it's likely to continue and debt to income ratio works, then that's all that matters. So an underwriter looks at three things. They take a look at the income, which we just talked about it, as long as it's stable and likely to continue, we'll, we'll be fine. And as long as it, it allows for the debt to income ratio to be below the max, then we're fine. The second thing that the underwriter looks at is credit. So we talked a little bit about the credit score. Minimum credit score is 620. As long as you run it through our system, they're at 620 and the system approves them, that's fine. The last thing that the underwriter looks at is assets. So we have to show that there's enough for what's known as cash to close. Cash to close includes the down payment. It includes closing costs. It includes setting up the escrow account for taxes and insurance. It includes basically this is the bottom line number that that person has to bring to closing. So as long as income, credit, and assets are within what's required for the program, then then that's all that matters. That's what the underwriter looks at. And going back to what we talked about earlier, it encourages family support. So the program is designed to allow the child to have their own independence, but still be close to mom and dad. So if mom and dad want to purchase a house on the same street, in the same community, in the same neighborhood, or a house that's close by, so that it still allows the, the, the child to maintain their independence, but they're still close enough to be able to have mom and dad be caregiver if that's needed then that's all that matters. So it fosters more stability with a family because it maintains the fact that they're they're still independent, but they're still close by the mom and dad. Yes. Okay, so a couple more questions are coming in. Sure, Um, sure, sure. Can they, so we talked about maybe renting out a room or turning it Mm -hmm. into a group home. What about a caregiver living with the individual? Caregiver living with the individual is perfectly fine, yes. Okay. And then um, does it have to be the parent who does this with the child or can it be older sibling or other family members? It has to be the parent or legal guardian. Legal guardian. So if the sibling has guardianship over the person, that would be fine. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Great questions, by the way. And it supports independent living. So again, it gives them the ability to, to be in their own space to have their own home, but it still fosters that sense of community, that sense of of family, having family close by. And again, the purpose of it is to uh, maintain the family unit, have them still have their independence, but still being close enough to mom and dad where mom and dad can check on them. It can be considered a long-term investment. So one of the easiest, fastest ways to gain wealth in my opinion, is through real estate. So this allows them to purchase the home, acquire the property, and if five, 10, 15, 20 years from now, they decide to sell the home, it's something that that they're getting as, as return on their investment for purchasing the home. So it, it provides a vehicle to build wealth through real estate, even if it's something for the child, yes even though, I'm sorry, it's something for the top. Yes. <laughs> and again, it promotes generational wealth. It allows the acquisition for the property, acquisition from the, for the, the, the property to, to um, invest and, and, and gain wealth through real estate. Right, right. And then once um, the individual with the disability passes away, are you Mm -hmm. allowed to do whatever you want with this home? Do you have to have somebody else with a disability inherit or purchase the home or the rules are done? No, they can do whatever they decide to do with the home. So it's it's treated. So just as, as someone would do with their primary residence, it's the exact same way. So they can will it to someone, they can pass on. It's it's looked at the exact same way. Fantastic. Yes. So by leveraging the benefits of the, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Michelle. No, I was just going to say, so this is called the 
Family Opportunity Mortgage. Yes, 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 yes. And again, not all lenders offer it. We do. Uh, I, I, I can't think of any other lender who offers it. And again, it's designed to promote independence for the child while still fostering a sense of mom and dad being close enough to be able to, to help with any needs that, that the, the child needs. So with some of the other programs, it, we looked at either as a second home or an investment property, but some of them have geographic restrictions. With this one, there is no geographic restriction. Uh, they can purchase the neighbor's house, again, to, to have them be close enough. So it's just, it helps foster stability within the family unit. Um, so you, can you use it to buy a duplex? No, unfortunately not. Because, and, and that's a, a, a great question. That's a great point. That's one of the questions that we got from the last, the last session. And I looked into that one. So you can't because the purpose of this is to provide a space for the disabled child not necessarily to, to provide a space and provide a source of income. So it wouldn't apply to a duplex. It's well, only for single family. Yes. I think what we're talking about is a duplex where the parent lives in one side and the child lives in another side. In that example, yes, that would be fine. But if it's something where it's just going to be the child and they wanted to rent one side, then no. Then that yeah. would be the So, so yeah. in that example that you just gave, yes, 100%, absolutely. But if it's just going to be the child and they're renting the other side, then unfortunately, no. Okay. Uh, so what would happen if the, there's still a loan balance on the mortgage and the parents pass mm -hmm. away, but the mm -hmm. child is there living in the home and they, you know, they don't have income? Um, at that point, would they be forced to sell the property? They would be forced out. So in that example... If, if they can maintain the mortgage, then nothing would happen. Nothing would be different. Nothing would change. If they can't maintain the mortgage, then the same procedure would, would apply as a primary resident. So if the mortgage isn't being paid, the, the, us, the lender, we would try to figure out some sort of, some sort of solution to try to still allow them to be in the home. But if there's literally no way for, for the mortgage to be paid, then Unfortunately, yeah, the home the home would be foreclosed on, but that and would be the same thing that would happen. Oh, go ahead, Michelle. Well, yeah, that's something that we could help families determine because you know we help figure the cost of future care and mm -hmm. how much money needs to be left to the special needs trust. So yes. at that point, we would help families figure out how much money needs to be in that special needs trust to make sure that this mortgage stays covered throughout yes. the rest of the child's life. And at that point, you could use uh, the special needs trust to pay for the residents because um, the child would not be on SSI anymore. To those of you who follow us and know what I'm talking about. Uh, but yeah, we would definitely be able to help with that. Otherwise, you could sell the property and use the proceeds to pay for yes. a residential community like Marbridge or 29 Acres or... Um, anything else like that. So why has your um, your company decided to take on this program? I mean, I'm so glad that you did. Sure. And I know, sure. um, you know, my years in real estate, that there are a lot of programs out there. It's just mm -hmm. that certain mortgage companies are willing to take on the work. They're willing to focus on um, advertising this opportunity. What, what made your company decide that you wanted to focus on this? So we're very, very big on making sure that we provide as many options for our clients as possible. We're not just a one size fits all. A lot of the loans that we actually do are loans that have been turned down by other lenders because we have the, the resources, we have the programs that allow us to do that. So I think the thought process behind it was what can we what can we do or what can we offer that helps this particular uh, clientele? What can we do? What can we offer that helps this particular clientele still achieve the dream of home ownership? So that's what our company is very, very big on. It's making sure that we have options available for for everyone. And we're very, very big on just making sure that we're a resource for for anyone that wants to achieve the dream of home ownership. 
and we figure out a way of providing more options. When when most lenders would say no, we try to figure out a way to say yes. That is fantastic. Okay, so I think we've covered most of the questions. You know, it a pay, paid caregiver can come and go to care for them, can live with them uh, yes. because it's a caregiver, right? It's not like mm -hmm. you're making money off of that living arrangement. Yes. Um, yes, yes. The mortgage can be paid in full, just like any normal house, but you would still have to worry about insurance and taxes, of course, would have to be covered somehow. Uh, so really, I mean, it's just like any other house. If the dis disabled adult person who was living there passes away, just like any other home, you sell it. Yes. You, you know, yeah. um, fantastic. Is NAF part of a larger entity? No, we are the we are the entity. So NAF New American Funding, we are the the entity. So we're not we're not part of anything else. We are the we are the bank. We are the lender, and we're a direct lender. Yes. Okay. Thank you uh, for these great questions. These are good um, questions. Yes. Would property taxes be exempt? Property taxes would not be exempt. Now, no. the the disabled child could apply for the homestead exemption. And if there's any kind of disability that they qualify for, they'd be able to get that on their side of the ownership for the property, but it wouldn't be 100% exempt. Yes. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Um, of course, you have to get homeowner's insurance. You have to have insurance yes. on, a on yes. any home with a loan and any home period, you need insurance on that. Um, yes. Can the trust take advantage of this type of mortgage? Um, so the trust purchasing and using? Yeah. I think not that's initially. Yeah, not initially. So this would have to be mom and dad who are purchasing it in their name as the, 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 the qualifying bars for the home. The trust would not be able to purchase it as a qualifying bar. Okay. All right. And then of course, um, it would be, you said everything is typical other, otherwise. Mm -hmm. So there's no mm -hmm. lender oversight in terms of making sure the person who's living there is still disabled or anything like that. Just typical. Yeah, just typical. And the, the, again, the, the purpose or the benefit of the program, the main benefit of the program versus some of the other ones is this is just treated as a primary residence for the disabled child, even though mom and dad might have a primary residence, this is treated as their primary residence. Yes. Right, right. And so, so and, the same and benefits. This, go ahead. No, no, go ahead, Michelle. I was just going to say, this is, you know, part of the mortgage application process when you're purchasing the house. It doesn't really have a lot of bearing on when you sell the house or what happens, mm -hmm. you know, it can later go into the trust. It can later be sold. It can later, you know, whatever. It's just that it's meant to be a primary residence for an individual with a disability. Exactly. Um, yes. Close by. So that's fantastic. Your mortgage company has rules for how or if you can transfer the title of the home into the trust or an LLC. Yes, yes. Yeah. So typically, you have to wait at least one year before you can do any kind of transfer to an LLC. Yes. Can it be a tiny home or a townhome that is in a group of others with a community center? It could be. So the the only caveat to that is, and the challenge that we we run into sometimes, the an appraiser has to come out and do a physical inspection of the home and the appraiser has to be able to find comparable sales that they can use to justify the value if they can't find the comparable sales then that might be a problem but as long as the appraiser can find comparable sales they can justify the value then it, it can be a tiny home or a home in a community a town home yes that's fantastic and one last question i see here is back to the question of what proof do we need? Uh, is a, a doctor's diagnosis of autism back when they were six years old, is that sufficient? I have used that before and the underwriter accepted it, yes. 
Uh, so now, anything that we can use, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Michelle. No, anything that you can use. Yeah. So anything that we can use to legitimize the fact that that the child is is considered disabled, underwriting will accept. Uh, so there isn't a set like it has to be this document. It's it's anything that we can use to legitimize the fact that that the child is considered disabled. Fantastic. Um, so if the child moves out later, yes, they can just sell the home, do whatever they need to do with it, like any yes. other home. Mm -hmm. uh, can a grandparent buy the home for the disabled child if they're not the guardians? Unfortunately, no. No, no unfortunately. Yeah. Cynthia, I see. I know you. I see where you're going with that one. Yeah. But no, unfortunately <laughs> not. Yeah. Um, what about modular or manufactured housing? Yeah, that's fine. So it's more for being able to find the comps. So as long as the 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 uh, appraiser can find comps that justify the value, then it it's it it works. Yes. Okay, and that's typical of all homes. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, the um, what's your name? The name of your company? One more time. Sure, it's New American Funding. New American yeah. Funding. New American Funding. And yes. his email is there. I want everybody to write down Dwayne Graham yes. at Dwayne.Graham at N-A-F-I-N-C. That's New American Funding Incorporated.com. Yes. So please write down his email address because if you have more questions later on today or you're talking to other people about this, um, you can reach out to Dwayne and he will be able to help you. What other... Yes. And well, never mind. I don't want to talk about that question because sure. Judith, I mean, he he's a lender, so he doesn't want to tell you all the other lenders who might have this program. <laughs> um, so, you know, talk to him about your questions. Dance with the yes. one that brought this idea to you. Yes, yes. And if you guys have any questions at all, don't feel like, you know, I shouldn't ask this question. There are no silly questions. Don't feel like you can't ask. Don't feel like you should know. Just, you know, there are no silly questions. Feel free to reach out and ask. Yeah, that this is a fantastic opportunity. Yes. Um, question, Karen's question is a good one. Okay, let me find quick. If the disabled ch child is their own guardian. So hmm. if the disabled child is their own guardian, can I mean, they can would just mom... purchase the house as normal, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Would they, they wouldn't need to use this program, would they? No, they would just purchase it as a primary residence for themselves. Yeah, yeah. So that wouldn't mm -hmm. wouldn't really matter. Um, mm -hmm. If they're, you know, if they have the wherewithal to be able to sign contracts and to be yes. able to pay for it, and they have the all of the um, criteria that any normal lender would look at, then yes. yeah, they, they can buy their own house and they don't really need this mm -hmm. product. Yes. Are there a limit on how many they do in Texas? So is there a limit on, on the amount that they can do in Texas? Well, I Technically, see mm -hmm. how many of these are in Texas. And then I see homes that have been purchased this way through your company. Do people do this often? Are you guys familiar yeah, with Texas? And... Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it sounds it sounds like a fantastic program. Um, a child who has Down syndrome owns the house, but can their step sibling, who is also their caretaker, live there with them? Yeah, I don't see a problem with mm -hmm. that. Do you? They could. Yeah, they could. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, definitely reach out to Dwayne with more. Um, more information about this. If you're curious, of course, you can also Google, but Dwayne is the one who brought this information to us. So I would suggest that you go through his company or at least, you know, give him a shot to make a a, a mortgage proposal to you. Go get yes. pre-qualified through him, find out what they can do. Now this has, um, this has to be an adult child, right? 18 and above. Yes. Yes. Of course. Of course. Uh, okay. So again, these are all great questions, great comments in the chat box. Mm -hmm. I, I love this. Um, you know, these are some of the other things that you want to keep on your radar as parents or caregivers 
or um, just if you have an individual with a disability in your life, things that you need to be thinking of and things that we can help um, help you with. So understanding the waivers and other government benefits, future cost of care, how to use the different kinds of accounts and where you can have money in accounts for your loved ones, beneficiary designations. We help with special needs trusts and how to fund those and how much money needs to be in there to take care of your loved ones. Um, this slide, this link will take you straight to our page of upcoming webinars, where you can see what we've got coming up and register for those webinars um, and see if you would be interested in uh, getting information about those. This is our entire team at Consolidated Planning Group. Again, we are located just outside of Houston in the Sugarland area, but we work all across Texas and all across the United States. So if you know of anybody who needs help figuring out the financial end of having a loved one with a disability, that is what we do. Um, I appreciate you taking the time to be part of this webinar today. We do offer a free consultation with Consolidated Planning Group. Uh, it is over Zoom. These usually take between 30 and 45 minutes where we, uh, you talk to an advisor and we answer your questions about planning, about the future, about finances, about benefits for your loved one. Um, and then we'll tell you how we work, what the process looks like and what we charge. So please, please schedule your free consultation or call me or email me and I'll schedule that for you. Um, either way, like I said, it's over Zoom, completely free, completely confidential, and you have the chance to speak with a financial advisor like me, Allison, or my husband, Andy, and we go through all of this information uh, with you. So any last questions in the chat box? Last time, the name of your, I'm, and I'm going to put these in the chat box, New American Funding, and yes. the program is called Family Opportunity Mortgage? Opportunity. Mm -hmm. There you go. New American Funding, the Family Opportunity Mortgage. And of course, us at Consolidated Planning Group are willing to, if you have further questions, get you hooked up to the right place, whether that be Dwayne or something that you need from us, we're happy, happy to help you. All right, any other questions? It's been a great webinar. Thank you so much. How long does it take for this webinar to be put on YouTube? Oh, it should be on our YouTube channel uh, this afternoon and you should all receive an email with a link to our YouTube channel so that you'll be able to watch this later on today. And I'm so glad that I was here again because of my history as a realtor, um, this is a great opportunity and I'm so excited to hear about this program. So thank you so much, Dwayne and all of you participants and um, New American Funding, we love this. Thank you so yes. much. Tell all your My friends pleasure. and family to give us a call. If there is anything yes. you need that we can do to help, we're here for you. Yes. Have a great day, everybody. Awesome. Thanks, Thanks everyone. You. My pleasure, Michelle. Okay. Bye, everyone. Yep.